Thank you, Chair Sanders. Today we're voting to subpoena the testimony of Steward Healthcare's Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Ralph De La Torre. The Health Committee has never issued a subpoena to compel testimony. There's a reason for doing so now. Subpoenas should only be used when, absolute nece when absolutely necessary when all other efforts have failed. And the subpoena we are voting on today meets that criteria. In 2010, private equity firm Cerberus Capital Management purchased a group of failing hospitals in Massachusetts, saving them from bankruptcy and preserving access to care for the communities they served. They formed Steward in a joint venture with Dr. De La Torre and his executive management team to manage the hospitals, which became the largest private for-profit hospital operator in the United States. And the hospitals were successful, due in part to Cerberus's investing hundreds of millions of dollars in facilities and resources. Cerberus also assumed hundreds of millions of dollars in pension liabilities. However, Dr. De La Torre remained responsible for the management of Steward and its day-to-day -day operations. From 2015 on, Steward, under Dr. De La Torre's leadership, began to expand at an unsustainable rate. In 2016, Dr. De La Torre made the questionable financial decision to sell Steward's real estate holdings to Medical Property Trust, or MPT, and have Steward Hospitals lease them back. That deal allegedly earned Dr. De La Torre and his executive team a very large payday. From there, his bad management decisions continued. In 2018, Stewart entered into a public-private partnership with the country of Malta to run a number of hospitals in Malta. The deal is now under investigation by the Department of Justice over allegations of fraud and corruption. In the wake of COVID-19, there were disagreements regarding Stewart management. Severus sold its controlling ownership stake in the company in June 2020 to a group of physicians, again led by Dr. De La Torre. To secure the funds to purchase Cerberus controlling interest, Dr. De La Torre <laughs> secured a loan from MPT. The buyout allegedly earned him a $100 million dividend. While Dr. De La Torre <coughs> was paying himself millions, Stewart fell behind in its mortgage payments, owing approximately $50 million in January 2024, or one half of the dividend Dr. De La Torre received. In May, Stewart filed for bankruptcy, publicly declaring debts of approximately $9 billion. Now, we must learn about these financial deals because it spelled the beginning of the end for Stewart, and it's more than 30 hospitals across the country, including in my home state of Louisiana in West Monroe. Stepping back, it's important to recognize that Stewart is not a private equity firm. Private equity did not cause the situation we're seeing today. In fact, robust private equity investment kept the hospitals afloat in 2010. Now, I practiced medicine for 25 years, and so you have the mindset. If you're gonna make the right decision for a solution, the right prescription, if you will, you have to have the correct diagnosis. Blaming private equity for stewards' mismanagement is not productive. It ignores that private equity invested hundreds of millions of dollars into failing hospitals, made them successful, and then sold them to a private management team, which was not private equity. So, to make the correct diagnosis is important if we're going to come up with the correct prescription. Stewart's financial troubles have seriously impacted its hospitals, threatening patients' access to life-saving care. Hospitals have had essential medical supplies repossessed by banks to pay off Stewart's debts. Workers at its facilities have been laid off, leading to a reduction in outpatient services and an increased burden on the remaining staff. The facility in West Monroe is Glenwood Regional Medical Center. According to the reports from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, a physician at Glenwood in West Monroe told a Louisiana state inspector that the hospital was performing, quote, third world medicine. Because of management decisions resulting in limited resources at Glenwood, the state had to force the hospital to operate at one third its capacity. One patient died waiting for a transfer to another hospital because Glenwood did not have the resources to treat. Inevitably, nearby hospitals, in fact, hospitals across the state, absorbed that burden, straining those facilities' ability to deliver quality care. Addressing this must be a top priority. Reportedly this week, someone may purchase Glenwood. While this needs to be approved by a bankruptcy judge, it's a good sign. Now we need answers as to how Glenwood got to this point. Unfortunately, Glenwood is not unique. 
at a steward-owned Massachusetts hospital, a woman died after giving birth when doctors realized mid-surgery that the supplies needed to treat her had been repossessed due to Stewart's financial troubles. And these examples are across Stewart's hospitals. Dr. De La Torre and his executive team's poor financial decisions and gross mismanagement is shocking. Patients' lives are at risk. Americans deserve answers. On June 25th, Chair Sanders and I asked Steward CEO Dr. De La Torre to testify before the committee. He refused without further discussion and did not counter with another date. He did not offer another company official to appear. Let me be clear, the committee would have been open to working with Stewart to ensure cooperation. They ended the negotiation before it started. The decision to subpoena Stewart does not come lightly, but the situation is actively impacting patients in the communities represent, we represent. Congress has a responsibility to act. Patients should not be turned away or denied care because of Dr. De La Torre's irresponsible business practices. My goal is to ensure that residents in the community served by Stewart hospitals, such as West Monroe, uh, served by Glenwood, receive the care they get and to get to the bottom of these problems to make sure they do not happen again. That is our top priority. I thank Chair Sanders for his collaboration in our bipartisan investigation. I urge colleagues to support this subpoena. Senator Cassidy, thank you very